Electronic games have come a long way since Pong exploded on the scene a few years ago. Video games are programs running on computers, right? Well, yes, but that has not always been completely true. Many of the first computer games like Pong and Breakout were discrete logic games. What this means is the logic and calculations needed for the game are hardwired onto purpose-built chips. Essentially they are computers that can only ever do one thing. They can't load or run a program, they can only perform the one function they were made to do. They do not have a CPU as we know it, and they do not have software running. So the original arcade Pong machines can only ever be a Pong machine. You couldn't load a new game because the game is physically engineered into the chips. Most of these games are very simple. Imagine programming where you can only test your program by creating physical chips that can't be changed. You really want to get it right the first time so you don't need to redesign and make new chips. Discrete logic games include the first commercial video game, Atari's 1971 Computer Space, and the following huge hit, Pong. Tato's Western Gun was also a discrete logic game, but the American and European version, Gunfight, developed by Midway, was the first commercial video game that used a microprocessor, Intel's 8080. Initially, video games were on huge computers in labs or universities. Arcade games brought them to the general public, and then the first generation of consoles brought them into the homes. The first generation of consoles were discrete logic systems with no programs or microprocessors. Notable consoles of the first generation include the Magnavox Odyssey, Coleco Telstar series, and Nintendo's Color TV game series. Over the generation, technology steadily improved, and later consoles of the generation moved the bulk of the circuitry to custom integrated circuits, such as Atari's Pong chips and General Instruments 8500 series, which was a ball and paddle integrated circuit designed for the consumer video game market. Whilst most discrete logic games were fairly simple, the last of the mainstream video games using discrete logic, Sega's masterpiece Monaco GP, was quite complicated. Its creation using discrete logic chips is really an engineering marvel. As much as I'm amazed by this game, I never really liked it as a game because I'm terrible at it. So again, this game has no software, the graphics are stored on ROM chips, but all of the logic of how the game works is on custom chips. It is a computer system that will only ever play Monaco GP. If you haven't played these games in the arcade or on a first generation console, you most likely have never played the original. Many of the discrete logic games can't be played today because they can't be easily emulated like other games. Typically with emulation you figure out how a system works and then you can run the software for that system on an emulator. With these games however you need a new emulator for each game because they are all different systems. It would be far easier to rewrite the game. Most of these games, including Monaco GP, have software recreations available of the original games. Well, that is a brief explanation of discrete logic games. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening.